knowingly and willingly. Three, was the violation of such gravity as to warrant his impeachment. And four, has Justice Corona betrayed the public trust? Ironically, the answers to the first two questions were supplied by the defendant himself. When Justice Corona admitted he had not disclosed in his yearly statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth over 180 million pesos in cash or near cash. While not in consonance with the SAL law, Justice Corona gave as his excuse the FCDU law. Yet nowhere in that FCDU law is the depositor not allowed, not allowed to disclose his own deposits. All the FCDU law prohibits is the, that the depository banks and third parties are not allowed to disclose the account and the amount of deposits. Searching for the answer to the third question took a little longer. Is the violation of the SALN law of such gravity as to merit impeachment? Not surprisingly, the answers were again supplied by Justice Corona and the High Court. Numerous decisions on cases involving SAN law violations have been handed down by the Supreme Court. Among others, Rabe versus Flores, Concerned Taxpayer versus Doblada, Carabeo versus Court of Appeals, Office of the Court Administrator versus Usman, Flores versus Montemayor, and several other. In Rabe versus Flores, for example, the Supreme Court ruled that a simple, humble court interpreter in Davao del Norte in Mindanao had to be dismissed from service because she had failed to disclose in her statement of assets and liabilities and net worth that she rented a market stall in the Panabo market. The High Court further ruled that Ms. Flores was perpetually disqualified from holding office. I went a bit further and posed a hypothetical question of myself. If the court had been supplied with a bank passbook belonging to Mrs. Flores, which showed a deposit of $10,000, which had not been reported in her SALN. Would the court's ruling have been the same? Dismissal and perpetual disqualification from office? My plain, ordinary, legally untrained, but reasonable mind tells me yes. The Supreme Court would have ruled similarly. If these public officers had been dismissed from office for failing to declare far less remarkable, far less valuable assets in their SALNs, despite and regardless of their excuses, then there is more reason to apply the law when the assets in question amount to over 180 million pesos. We should not penalize the poor man for stealing a bicycle, but rule that the rich man must first steal a Mercedes before he is subjected to a similar penalty. My fourth and last question was, did Justice Corona betray the public trust? Again, ironically, the answer was supplied by Justice Corona and the Supreme Court. For contained in the new code of judicial conduct, for the Philippine judiciary, under Canon 2, which covers integrity, are two, questions, are two sections. One, judges shall ensure that not only is their conduct above reproach, but that it is perceived to be so in the view of a reasonable observer. Two, the behavior and conduct of judges must reaffirm the people's faith in the integrity of the judiciary. Justice must not merely be done, but must also be seen to be done. Mr. President, we all must face the misflorices of our country, whether in Mindanao, the Visayas, or Luzon. We must be able to tell them that justice is, to the best of our ability, being applied equally 
to the rich and to the poor, to the powerful and to the powerless. The Senate impeachment court must restore the people's faith in the judicial system. The Senate must bring about a higher level of moral standard in governance. I therefore find for the people guilty on Article 2. Honorable Senator Judge Pangilinan. Kagalang-galang ng mga kasamahan sa impeachment court. Mga kababayan, 